a black and white ball of fur with a look in his eyes that no one can resist. That's Fulong. About half a year ago, he caused a stir with television and news agencies around the world, for Fulong is the first naturally conceived panda baby in Europe. Meanwhile, the pink, tiny little something grew into a fine young bear, quite capable of presenting a challenge to the zoo's caretakers for even routine chores like weigh-in time. Should I go over him? Should I do off for that? Yeah. I will linger with just a touch, steam ram sort. But it's not that easy to get him down. Every now and then, the team's climber needs to rescue Fulong from his platform. And Tony Hoshek yeah. tries to grab the little rascal just like his mummy does, but it's not that simple, for Fulong is clawing pretty hard. What's <laughs> do? The little panda has grown considerably over the last few months, increasing his birth weight of about three and a half ounces, almost a hundred times over, to nearly 22 pounds. The little one has long since outgrown the scales of his baby days, and panda keeper Evelyn Dungel had to devise a new system. But even Tony, a well-trained athlete, is pushed to the limit, trying to get Fulong into position. Is it What? had a kilo of 26 pounds. That means Fulong gained almost two pounds. And from now on, it will probably have to be a body scales which his keepers can step on. Getting weighed got Fu long tired too, and so he turns to his favourite pastime first a rest and then a nap. And despite his daily 19-hour sleep, he is the Vienna Schönbrunn Zoo's new star. It was back in 2003 when Fu Long's parents visited from China. Panda keeper Evelyn Dungel remembers. Of course, we were inexperienced in panda keeping. There weren't many pandas in other European zoos then, let alone in Schönbrunn. So about three weeks before they arrived, we visited the Chinese breeding station in Wolong for an orientation to learn what's important about pandas, their care, upkeep and nutrition. Our veterinarians joined us gathering information and also performing the final checkups with their Chinese colleagues. Five or six. Okay. Four. So five plus this. Yes. This is Fortunately, we had unobstructed access to the pandas while they were being transported and were able to make sure that everything was fine if they had enough food or needed water. Neither animal was under narcosis or tranquilized. We checked on them frequently and were ready to administer tranquilizers, of course. 
but the pandas were absolutely serene, just sitting there enjoying their bamboo. Even when they ran out of water, we just got them some of the standard water bottles that aircraft always have on board. Our arrival in Vienna was very relaxed as well. After all, there were a few novelties for them, like our use of glass panes as a barrier. But they were very calm when we moved them into the installation. Yang Yang looked at everything at first, with that curiosity of hers. But Lang Hui's only concern seemed to be fresh bamboo, and he grabbed the best stick, sat down, and started to eat. From the beginning, the two pandas were part of an ambitious research project of the Vienna Schönbrunn Zoo. For as popular as pandas are, little is known about their biology. Regular x-rays of their paws' growth joints will help us learn exactly when a teenage panda becomes an adult. Even if Fu Long's father, Long Hui, and veterinarian Hannah Fielgrader don't always agree on the procedure. Könntest du die Platte bitte loslassen? Long Hui. Mein Gott, sturer Bur. So ausfüllen. Hör auf damit. Ach. Nein. Komm. Meine Platte. Komm auch. Hm. Ich nehme doch die kleine. <lacht> <lacht> Gib dir äh. die kleine. Der ist halt aber witzig. Pubertät tut dich gut. So, gut. Geht? Probieren wir das noch einmal. Ja, ich bin ich ich ready. Rüber. Und wenn wir Glück haben, sind seine Wachstumsfugen ja. fertig. Und dann war das das letzte Röntgenbild okay. heute. Halt. Dann bist du ein großer Bär schon. Dann wächst du hoffentlich nicht mehr bis auf den Bauch. Soll das legen, oder? So mal, Das oder? ist wunderbar, wenn er das so hält. Bin ganz begeistert. Ich schaue nur noch kurz dieses Karte. Okay, passt. So, Hinlegen, wenn das Röntgenbild dann entwickelt ist, werden wir wissen, ob er ausgewachsen ist oder nicht. Mhm. Dann komme ich dich nicht mehr quälen mit Röntgen. Naja, wenn es Gutes gibt, geht es ja, gell? Dann machen wir was anderes. Lass uns was anderes einfallen. Gutes Tauschgeschäft. Mhm. Machen wir vielleicht mal eine Küre oder so. Das ist ein neues Programm. But what about pandas in the wild? Good. Sind wir fertig mit dem? Ja. Ja, der Panda ist ja das Symbol. Pandas have become the symbol associated with the protection of wildlife. Like in the logo of the World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF. Presently, there are about 1,600 individuals still living in the wild. The problem is that they don't form homogenous populations, but are scattered across a few island-like bamboo groves, and this results in something of a genetic bottleneck. It's fair to ask, why pandas, when there are so many endangered species? Pandas look sweet and adorable, even in adulthood. So you could say that they are receiving preferential treatment over less charismatic animals, but other species that live in the panda's habitats benefit from the sympathy for pandas too. Fortunately, 
Finally, in 2006, the time has come. Meticulously observed by zoologists, Long Hui and Yang Yang are starting to get involved with each other. But the couple insists on keeping a little privacy and seems to have mated unnoticed overnight. Much to the joy of then director Helmut Pechlaner. The surveillance camera recorded everything and Helmut Pechlaner is able to watch the panda's mating game the day before. Und da bin ich dann mittags noch mal her. Genau. Dann ist er ausschließlich oben geschlafen und hat überhaupt nichts mehr getan. Na, und sie ist auch auf der Plattform. And Gudrun explains that Yang Yang just stayed on the platform calling Long Hui. But when he came to join her, she barked him off, growled at him, gave him a clip around the ears, and so he left again. Na, ja, irgendwie gerade so geschickt hat er jetzt aber auch nicht, gell? <lacht> Their habitat is what's most essential to most endangered species. That's what diminishes them so rapidly, their loss of living space. But once a habitat is protected, the species is automatically protected as well. The panda is said to be a sex grouch. Their rates of reproduction leave much to be desired, which isn't the case in the wild. As long as there are bamboo groves, the pandas have no problem whatsoever. The same is true for many other animal species. All that live in the same regions as the pandas are protected with them. In 2006, there was no offspring. But one year later, Long Hui and Yang Yang, who, unlike any other panda couple in any other zoo, share an enclosure, mated again. And this time, the zoo's new director, Dagmar Schratter, witnessed the event. But Yang Yang keeps everybody in suspense again. After more than three months, veterinarian Hannah Fielgrader still can't see a baby in her ultrasound examination. So, jetzt schauen wir mal, Schatzi. Ja. Was haben wir jetzt, Evelyn, ungefähr? Wie viel den Tag? Äh, 109. Da ist das jetzt. 109. 110. Da ja. den. Und so vom Verhalten her ist sie aber so wie immer. Unauffällig. Ganz unauffällig, mhm. okay. Mit der Thermokamera hat das irgendwas ergeben? Wann habt ihr das, Nein, das letzte Mal gemacht? Am Freitag haben wir gemacht. Ist eigentlich immer sehr gleichmäßig verteilt, die, die Temperatur. Also, also keine speziellen Durchblutungsstellen. Durchgehend so. jetzt. Ja. Auch nicht irgendwie Gebärmutter stärker worden ja. oder so, ja. siehst du gar nichts. Ja. Patrika. Hm? Herzschlag haben wir aber keinen. Ja. Naja, das Und heißt. Dieser Fleck, den man da sieht, ja, ist das was ich, oder ist das nicht? Das ist fraglich, ja. Aber ohne Herzschlag halt. Ja. Ohne Herzschlag ist schlecht. Dabei ja. <lacht> Aber wir haben ja noch den Joker bis 155. Ja. Aber da ist auf jeden Fall etwas, was eben vorher nicht da war. Das kann aber natürlich Und was eine, kann das sonst sein? Na, es kann eine Gebärmutter sein, die jetzt einfach einen Zyklus gehabt hat. Oder es ist ja. diese Pseudogravidität. Scheinschwanger. Die können so tun, als wären sie schwanger, sind aber nicht schwanger. Und das geht bis zum 115. Tag. Genau. Oder 119. Und haben, zeigen auch normal das ganze Verhalten, wie wenn sie schwanger wäre. Aber man weiß nicht, wie es im Bauch ausschaut. Aber man weiß, dass die Hormone genauso sich verändern. Aber die Milchdrüsen sind auch noch. Das ist unverändert, ja. Unverändert. Wir schauen eh auch immer, sie nicht vergrößert. Und das müsste ja aber laut, laut gut nach der Liste auch schon langsam so weit ja, sein, dass man da ein bisschen eine Veränderung verhalten. sieht und Fünf, sechs Wochen schwört. vorher größer und rot. Genau. Na gut, immer noch also, fraglich, aber eher nein, weil kein Herzschlag, aber fraglich immer noch. Die Option ist immer noch offen. Also aufgeben braucht man es noch nicht. Nein. Gell? 
Aber so langsam musst du zuschauen. And 17 days after her last ultrasound examination, Yang Yang finally did get going, giving birth to a pink, tiny little something that she tended carefully from the moment it appeared. Keeper Gudrun Tomek was the first to learn about Fulong's surprising arrival. I got here like every morning and heard a squealing from the nesting box. I could hardly believe my ears and said to Evelyn, please come and listen if you are hearing what I just did. We immediately turned on the monitor, but couldn't see anything for more than an hour. Because of the way she held it in her arm, we could only see her back and her head. There were lots of situations when we didn't know where she had the baby. She often rolls herself up so tightly, and then the question is, where is the little one? Is it in her paws or in her mouth? When you're familiar with the giant panda set of teeth and powerful chewing muscles, you naturally worry that hopefully she knows what she's doing, not to hold it too tightly, but firmly enough not to drop the baby. I mean, especially at the beginning, you are worrying if everything is still all right. About two weeks later, Yang Yang, who hasn't eaten anything until now, leaves the nesting box with her little one for the first time. Gudrun and I were there and saw it on the monitor. She is leaving the nesting box with her baby. We immediately went back there to see what she was doing. There was a pile of hay right next to the box, and she made herself comfortable there with the little one, just stretching out for an hour and taking a rest. She wouldn't eat or do anything special, just wanted to stay outside with her baby a bit. Once she was about to leave the box, the baby rolled on its back and immediately started squealing. And like a good mother, she turned around, went back inside and picked it up again. I mean, she immediately noticed, oops, no time for eating. She just takes care of her baby all day long, cleans it, suckles it, and only cares for it. That's what continues to fascinate me about this whole thing over and over again. It was typical of the Viennese method to keep everything as natural as possible. We wanted to make sure that Yang Yang was comfortable with her situation and able to handle everything. This was her first birth, and consequently, she was observed around the clock, especially during the first three months. If she knew how to care for her baby, if she had enough milk, and if it was nutritious enough for the cub. But it was also critical for us to stay in the background as much as possible, like mainly checking things on the monitor, sleeping near the nesting box, and listening to hear if everything was all right, rather than actively interfering and unnecessarily parting the baby from the mother to weigh or measure it. 
We started that two months later. But before, it was only watching. Back to the Chinese panda breeding center in Wolong, where a very different philosophy holds sway. And animal keepers and veterinarians even take part in the birth process. <laughs> No sooner is the little one born than it is taken into the doctor's care. The mother entrusting her baby to the veterinarian is an important step in their partnership, for they will raise the baby together. Since the 1980s, more than 80 panda babies have been born and raised in Wolong. No matter how tiny the cub, just like a human baby, it draws attention to its needs with loud cries. And from now on, the incubator is its second home. While the veterinarian looks after the baby, the mother is still in labor. Twins are not unusual for pandas, and even in the wild, more than half of all births are twins. But regardless of whether they give birth in the wilderness or a panda station, pandas seldom rear both cubs. The weaker one is usually abandoned and dies within a few hours. The veterinarians in Wolong developed a risky strategy. Since panda babies depend on their mother to survive, the twins simply have to share her attention. So the veterinarians began to raise the babies together with their mothers, and their success proves them right. Was für die großen Zuchtzentren in China im Moment sehr wichtig erscheint, ist eine große Population an Menschenobhut zu haben. What currently seems to be most important in the large breeding centers in China is to place a large population into human care. That is, they are breeding non-stop, so to speak, in case their numbers in the wild continue to decline. What appears more important to us is to make sure that these young pandas learn natural behaviors from their mother. Our cub is barely over a half a year old, at an age when young pandas in China are already separated from their mothers, and just when they love to interact and play a lot. There is, of course, always a strong learning component involved in playing. And so we think a young panda still has a lot to learn from his mother. In the wild, they stay with her for between one and a half to two years. And we feel that it's not only important to have as many pandas as possible, but also for them to get along in the wild and manage on their own. Meanwhile, the Bear Brothers in Wolong are three weeks old and trade places on a weekly basis. After one week with his mother, the baby goes into the incubator for the next. Okay. 
This baby exchange is always a critical moment. Will the mother accept her baby again after not seeing it for an entire week? Sharing the responsibility between panda and veterinarian for nurturing the cubs poses the danger of twisting their behaviour. For now, though, everything seems fine, and the mother immediately looks after her second baby. The Vienna Zoo, in comparison, strives to reduce human intervention to a minimum. A zoo can never be a perfect simulation. For instance, there aren't any natural enemies in the panda installation, of course. But as I said, we want to keep as many conditions as possible like those in the wild. Consequently, the installation isn't heated. We are placing a strong emphasis on the baby actually growing thick, strong fur that can withstand cold temperatures. So we think there are many aspects to be considered to make sure that he grows up as naturally as possible, with all factors, which meant, for example, that his weight was less than that of other young pandas of his age. We were concerned about that at first, if that's normal. Of course, we tried to gather as much information as possible from other zoos and panda centers. But finally, we came to the conclusion that it's very likely because we never added any extra food and didn't heat his space, so that the little ones simply had to put a lot of energy into keeping warm. But that's fine. About two and a half months later, Fulong has his first contact with humans. Veterinarian Hannah Fielgrader and Evelyn Dungel examined the panda baby together. They whisper to avoid upsetting Mother Yang Yang, who had entered the adjacent enclosure to eat. Ja, 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 ja,
<lacht> ja, du bist einer von 1200, weiß ich nicht, irgendwas. Lass nochmal noch aufzwergen. Ja. Gut, vielleicht. Kriegst du schon Zähne, hm? Ja, ist schon gut. So, Baby, kommst du jetzt wieder rein? Sonst braucht man eh nichts, gell? Das ist ja ein Wahnsinn. Das ist ja, das ist ja wirklich unsagbar. Du bist ja gewachsen. Lustig, dass der so rosa ist, hm? Das ist doch ein Mädel. Der hat doch da so viel Rosa. Ja, ist ja gut, Schatzi. Sich anhalten bei ja, der Hand. Ich würde dich auch gerne mitnehmen, aber definitiv geht das leider nicht. Hast du schon seinen Glücksfuß gesehen? Mit den weißen Schon weiße Pfote. <lacht> du wirst ein weißpfotiger. So, geh so, jetzt in die Höhle. Warte, ich lege den Ding. Das ist ein frischer Stroh. Und das ist schon ziemlich abgedingselt. Das ja, ja. 3,90 Kilo ist toll, oder? Gutes Gewicht. Das ist wirklich genug. Warte, ich gebe das nicht, dass ich dann nehme. Die Handschuhe hast du alle? Ich habe alle Handschuhe. Vier Stück? Ich habe vier Stück Handschuhe, eine Waage. Ich <lacht> wieder uns reden. So, Kopf wieder runter, hinten in die Höhe schlafen. Das ist schon so was seltsames. That's truly remarkable, quite sensational, absolutely unreal. A panda baby is definitely something very special. There aren't that many of them anymore. And the simple fact that you can even touch one, that it's alive, that's absolutely sensational. Es sind natürlich gerade beim ersten Jungte immer wieder Phasen, wo man unsicher wird. There are always moments where you don't know if everything is still all right or if you should maybe change something. In the various places in the U.S. or China where pandas are kept, they use methods very different from ours. You're interested in collecting their data, of course, but then you evaluate things for yourself, just what you want to implement and where you may want to take a different approach. But then you simply try to use common sense, follow your instincts, and it worked and everything was fine. Yeah, you're a good bear. Want to watch a little? Let's watch a little. Now turn around, honey, or you won't see anything. That's it. Fine. Very good, sweetie. But the scientific study of pandas is not limited to watching them grow up. In her doctoral thesis, Evelyn Dungel researches the significance of the panda's characteristic face patterns. In this experiment, the panda has to recognize certain patterns. If he opens the drawer with the proper eye spots, he's rewarded with tasty vegetable balls. There are many different theories about panda's face patterns, none of which have been proven or examined closely enough to draw any conclusions about what's really the determining factor. My hypothesis was that these bears are able to individually distinguish between each other. To do this, they need good, short-distance vision. Long distance wouldn't be that crucial, since communication in the bamboo forest forest is more through sounds and smell, but when two pandas meet, their face patterns may be decisive in recognizing each other too. So I did tests with them. If they are able to distinguish patterns, shapes and spots at short distance, and both pandas were capable of that. So I cut out panda portraits and adjusted them in size. The only difference was the shape of these spots, and both pandas were able to distinguish between 10 different eye spots.
Ja, also ganz zu Beginn habe ich einfach Kreis, Dreieck, Vier. At first I used a circle, a triangle and a square. And they were able to distinguish between them. Back then the circle was the so-called positive stimulus, coupled with a reward. And both were able to differentiate the circle from the triangle and the square. Yang Yang even remembered the circle half a year later. So I repeated the test. And across three consecutive sessions, she immediately got more than 80% right. Based on these tests, I can confirm that they are able to recognize and distinguish patterns and shapes at short distances. And they are also able to recognize each other at short distances. Close international cooperation is part of good animal keeping, and there is an active exchange of information and experience among panda keepers. The Madrid Zoo in Spain, for example, has one of the newest panda installations. There is something to be learned from any kind of panda keeping. We had been to Germany and Hong Kong even before our couple arrived in Vienna. We saw additional installations in Wolong, of course, where Yang Yang and Long Hui are from, but also in Chengdu and the Peking Zoo. And it's very interesting to see what the pandas are fed, their daily routine, and everything that happens around these animals. I discuss with the keepers here how exactly they'll continue the training, if the Chinese keeper should carry on with it, or if they'll take over. There was a concern that it's pretty hard to adopt the Chinese commands, because it's simply very difficult for us to articulate them properly. Wie schwierig es vielleicht auch für den Bären ist, diese Kommandos unterscheiden zu können, diese Kommandos rauszuhören. However, I believe they react strongly to visual signals. They always used body language, showing the bear that he's supposed to get up, sit, or lie down, and combine this with the Chinese verbal commands. And I think that body language plays a greater part in this. I think that they have already been trained in Chengdu during the first half year of their lives. Here in Madrid, they are mainly supposed to get to know their new terrain, the keepers, and basically get adjusted. So during their first half year in Madrid, there wasn't a great emphasis on training. Now it's done three times a week, and the pandas already know a lot. Currently, the Chinese keepers are here to show how it should be done, what's important to be mindful of, how to implement the whistle, how to reward, and when. But even for Evelyn Dungel, the Madrid Zoo has a surprise. Ja, wie ich das erste Mal gehört habe, dass die Tiere hier täglich geduscht werden, äh, war ich mal ein bisschen erstaunt, weil wir das äh, eigentlich in keiner Haltung bisher gesehen haben. Äh, we actually hadn't seen the daily showers for pandas in any installation before and never tried it ourselves. Maybe not a bad idea in the summer when it's hot. Of course, our pandas could always use one of our ponds to cool themselves. And we've also got a mist spraying system. But maybe it's an added incentive to rinse them off with a hose. We could try to find out if they'd rather have a fine spray or if they prefer a massage-like jet of water on their fur. We'll try that once, to see if our pandas like that. It seems funny somehow, the idea of giving a bear a shower. I don't think the pandas feel uncomfortable. 
Uh, but the reward with apples played a big part. I don't know if they'd go through the whole procedure without this reward. We'd have to try and see. I can't tell if they really like the shower or if it's just something they accept because they're rewarded with apples. Meanwhile, Fu Long decided to take his next big step in life. He leaves the nesting box where he spent his first few months and starts to explore the inner enclosure, still a little uncertain. Initially, we somehow thought that as soon as he gets out of the cave, he'll continue exploring everything, get inside the inner enclosure, and be visible to the zoo's visitors. But he preferred to stay in the area around the nesting box and inspect everything there. And again, it was important to us that he and his mommy, Yang Yang, were able to choose for themselves without any influence or pressure. We just wanted this to be an entirely natural process, step by step. First around the nesting box, and later in the installation. But we didn't think it would take that long. His little trip turns into a top media event. Fu Long's first steps are broadcast by more than 800 TV stations. Within a matter of a few minutes, press photographers have taken hundreds of photos. And the next day, it's pandemania for all. Fu Long is the Vienna Schönbrunn Zoo's new star. his various attempts at climbing, always just on the verge of a charming disaster, he wins the hearts of both young and old. Even mummy Yang Yang gets roped into playtime now. No tree or fence is safe anymore, and he discovers that his keeper's tools are particularly fascinating toys. Our little puppy will definitely be staying in Vienna until his second birthday. And when exactly Yang Yang decides that it's still okay for him to be around her, or when it's time for her to get rid of him, we'll see. For the time being, though, she is constantly available for Fulong. And during his first excursion into the open-air enclosure, 
she observes his cautious steps in the unfamiliar terrain. After exploring the inner enclosure, Fu Long already ventured outside. We've been waiting with that to allow him to improve his climbing skills a little. The trees outside are pretty tall, but he has conquered them safely, and Yang Yang always keeps an eye on him to make sure that everything is fine. And that's rather important too, because getting off the platform isn't easy. There were many beautiful moments, like hearing the baby for the first time that morning we came in and simply didn't know where Yang Yang was because the camera in her nesting box wasn't working. And hearing her baby for the very first time, of course, when you stop breathing for a moment, unsure if all of this is really happening. That phase lasted pretty long, actually. That question of, is this real? For such a miracle to come into being, so to speak. And then the first stages of development. There was a spy hole in the nesting box where we regularly checked how the two were doing. And one day, when we opened the spy hole, we saw the baby in her arms and opening its eyes for the first time. And then, just watching his progress and development. You can learn a lot from books, but once you are personally able to experience everything firsthand, that's truly something special. And even though the panda baby got some bearish competition from the polar bear's recent offspring, he remains the Vienna Schönbrunn Zoo's big star, Fu Long, the little giant panda. <laughs>